everyone and welcome to Architectural Alchemy, what you need to know about real 3D and virtual reality with Enscape. My name is Juliana. For those who don't know me, I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today we have with us Daniel and Josh from Enscape presenting this webinar. Um, in today's session, we'll dive into Enscape and show you guys how you can effortlessly create realistic, immersive 3D experience um, from your building models. Um, and throughout the webinar, as usual, you can ask a question on the left-hand corner. Um, you can ask Josh or Daniel to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time, and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our social media, website, and YouTube channel. Um, so we post all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or rewatch it on your own time. We will also be sending the on-demand recording, I believe, 24 hours after the webinar. And yeah, without further ado, I'll pass it on Thank to you. Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Okay. Hi, thank you guys very much. We're, it's, uh, it's very nice that we're here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Um, this webinar that Josh and I put together is really intended to be an intro webinar uh, to real-time rendering and virtual reality. If you are an experienced Enscape user, um, some of the topics that Josh and I are going to talk about, they might be a little bit elementary. So if there's anything that you would like to uh, take a deeper dive into, uh, if you have specific questions, Josh and I can handle that at the end of the webinar, or we're more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo with you and your firm. So please keep that in mind. So to kind of kick things off, I, I like to show this slide. Um, this is a, a kind of an interesting slide if you look on the screen. What, when we think of real-time rendering and, and we think of architectural visualization, it, it's often images like these that come top of mind. And while you can get some incredible output from Enscape, really more subtly and, and maybe even more importantly is how real-time 3D is improving the design process. So, so how does Enscape improve the design process? Well, Traditionally, if you think about uh, 3D visualization, it, it's really been isolated or, or disconnected from the larger design process. In most firms, we would uh, stop design in order to visualize, or in some firms, the design would fork and the design would be sent to a specialty viz team or, or even subbed out of house completely while the design team continued. And as part of this process, what you end up with is two models, uh, one for design and documentation, and then another separate model that's completely disconnected for visualization. And at some point, these models need to be merged, which can be difficult as these models now may look very different because they were developed for different purposes and, and to answer very different questions, right? So when we create this split, we're starting to make decisions in isolation. Um, the models are not being informed by what's happening in the parallel model. And there's a real cost to this workflow. Not only is it in time lost for having to manually coordinate data, uh, but it also is costs that happen when there are coordination errors or, or missing information during this model coordination. And you know that cost could be okay if we did this justification once, but as you know, design is iterative. So, so this coordination is, is, is happening often and frequently in the design process. So why, you know, what, what's happened? You know, how did we get to that state? You know, why is rendering and visualization separate from design and, and why can't it be integrated? Well, traditionally, rendering technology um, was just very difficult. It could take hours, sometimes days to get out of high quality visualization. You know, correctly configuring textures and materials and lighting to achieve a really realistic look it demanded specialized know-how, and even then it could require a lot of trial and error. As a result, in many firms, rendering and 3D visualization, it, it was really relegated to a specialist or uh, using specialty software and, and even subbed out completely from the firm. With Enscape and real-time 3D, it's different. This next generation of visualization technology really leverages new advances in graphics technology really the same rendering technology that you'll find in today's high-end video games. And while the results are incredibly impressive, more important, as Josh will show us, the results are instant and they're just very easy to achieve. 
quite simply, Enscape is just the easiest way to go from this to this. Now, for us, this idea of ease of use and speed, you know, it's not jargon. These are really, they're truths. And they're, these are truths are derived from the fact that Enscape is a rendering plugin. It plugs into your existing architectural BIM program. It's not a separate rendering program. Unlike other rendering programs, we're not exchanging files or manually syncing data. Enscape natively plugs into your BIM program. It integrates into the BIM interface and into your BIM workflow. In fact, if you already know how to add a light or a texture in your modeling program, Revit, ARCHICAD, SketchUp, Vectorworks, Rhino, you already know how to use Enscape. The results are just easier and faster. And in fact, one way to really think about Enscape is as not a separate rendering program, but really just a live viewport into your BIM model. Anything you do, anything you do in your design model is automatically reflected in Enscape and it's reflected in real time. Now, because Enscape is real time and because it's integrated into your BIM workflow, what you'll find after you use it is it becomes an essential tool for every phase of the design process, not just for rendering. And this is a big difference between Enscape and other rendering programs. Enscape really goes beyond renderings and we could help you um, really with all phases of design. With Enscape, you could immediately see the impact your design decisions are having on your buildings, architecture and construction. So you can quickly validate your design ideas and get to decision points faster. Uh, it'll allow you to help you better communicate with other project stakeholders to avoid errors and ensure that the team's all on the same page. And of course, Enscape can help set your firm apart by giving you new ways to present your designs um, in ways that just, just simply aren't possible in your design program today. So with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Josh and have Josh walk us through some of these benefits that we can, uh, that Enscape provides. Josh? All right, thanks, Dan. Let me steal the screen from you. All right, there we go. All right, cool. All right, so like Dan was saying, Enscape's a plugin. So once you install it, it sits on top of your ribbon inside of Revit here. And all you have to do is have a 3D view selected that you want to start Enscape from. And all you have to do is simply hit the little play button in the top left corner. From there, that's going to take everything inside the Revit window and push that inside of Enscape. Now there's going to be a menu that pops up on the far right hand corner telling you some basic navigation controls. So what you can do to navigate around is use the WASD keys to move around. Now, if there, there might be a little bit of a lag here, about a two to three second delay, but it is running nice and smooth on my machine here. Um, so again, navigating around, you're gonna use the WASD keys to move around. So W to move forward, S to move back, A to move left, D to move right. And now you can do some cool things right away too, like change the time of the day, so you can show your clients exactly what that space is gonna look like at virtually any time of the day here. So really powerful workflow to be able to walk your clients through what the design's gonna look like and experience the model. Now, where the real power of Enscape comes in is being that real-time window into your model. So what that means is whatever you're doing inside of your host design application, so in this case, Revit, you're going to be able to see those changes happening instantaneously. You know, so let's say you're working with your client and they want to see a window right here. All you have to do is go inside of Revit and put a window right inside of there. So all you have to do is pick the one that you want. There we go. You know, just keep working like you normally would, and Enscape's going to show those changes to you there in real time. So again, that's where that real power comes in is being able to see those changes happening instantaneously here. And again, you can just move it around wherever you need to. And again, seeing those changes occurring in real time. And with Enscape being a real time rendering engine, you're always going to be looking at what that final result is going to look like. So that's another really big benefit of it. So now while you're working in your model and you need to start adding materials, you can do some things right away. Um, by default, Enscape is going to look at all the different Revit materials you have set up inside your project. So you just edit them like you normally would any other uh, Revit material, or we do have our Enscape material library. So what this is gonna do is give you the ability to take any material from here, and you can pick any one of them that you want. You can pick multiple different ones as well, and you can import them. Now what that's gonna do is you go and create a Revit material. And now you can, again, apply that like you normally would any other Revit material. Or if you want to preview what some of them look like before importing them into your project. And let's say you already have your project set up with materials and things, or at least like the naming convention how you want, and you just want 
to kind of add in some real material or some materials that have a little bit more realistic look with different material maps, we do have a way where you can preview that. So if you go hover over our materials in our Enscape material editor, there's three little dots. You click the replace with Enscape material. And now what you can do is pick the one that you want and you're going to get a nice preview of what all these different materials are going to look like for you. You know, let's say I like this one, or again, we can even keep scrolling through, checking out what some different tile materials are going to look like, you know, but let's say we want that wood floor material. All you have to do is hit replace. And now what you're going to do is see the results right here instantaneously. So all this is going to do is simply replace just the materials. It's not going to replace the naming convention at all or anything like that. So this is a really powerful workflow to be able to preview what some different Enscape materials are going to look like. And now I can further edit those materials as well if I would like. So what I can do is go back to this Enscape material editor and let's say I need to change this to a little bit bigger size. I can rotate this as well. All the while seeing those changes happening instantaneously inside of Enscape. And the best part about this is too, is these materials are going to go be updated inside of Revit. So it's kind of nice bi-directional link here really comes into play. Some other cool things that we can do with this material editor are have the ability to do water and grass. So all these are done with a keyword. So all you have to do is call your material grass or water and Enscape will automatically generate water and grass for that material. Or all you have to do is simply go to the material that you want and click the Enscape type of material here. And then you're going to see those different material um, types here. And then you can further adjust those all with inside of the Enscape material editor. One other really cool thing that you can do to add a little bit more realism to the materials or to your scene is apply video textures. So all you have to do is simply go to your material that you want to be playing that movie and just simply add the video file into the albedo map. And now when you move around the model, you're gonna see that video file playing. So really powerful to add a little bit more realism to the scene as well. Now let's say we want to start adding in entourage like assets and people and furniture and those types of things. So by default, Enscape comes with a couple different options for that. So we have our asset library so this is where we can pick through our over 3,000 pre-built assets for us to choose from. So we have a couple of different ways we can do this. We can pick a person or an object that we want to put inside of our Revit window. And all you have to do is place asset on surface, pick any surface that you want to place that 3D model on, click and place inside of Revit. And what that's going to do is, again, put it inside of Revit, and it's going to put it inside of Enscape here. So there we go. There We can see that's what our 3D model looks like inside of Revit, and what we can see is how that model looks like inside of Enscape. We do have another way as well to do this. So if we go inside the Enscape window, this is where we have access to that same material or to that same asset library. So we can click uh, people, furniture, anything like that. So let's say we want more people. Now you can click and place any asset that you want inside there, click apply changes. And what that's going to do is take those changes from inside of Revit or from Enscape and push those inside of Revit as well. So again, this nice bi-directional link here really comes into play. If you need to place multiple different assets, we do have the ability as well to do that. So we have what we call our multi-asset placement. So say we need to place or kind of start scattering some different types of vegetation. We can click our multi-asset placement feature here, and then we can start picking different objects that we want to start scattering out through our scene. So we have a couple of different ways we can do that. We can do a rectangular, circular, or a paint bucket selection. So if we just paint bucket that selection, what that's gonna do is it's gonna start populating that scene with all the different assets that we want that to do. And you can change the density of that, you can change the rotation of that as well. And once you hit confirm placement, it's going to take those changes and again, push those back inside of Revit as well for us. Another really cool feature about using the Enscape asset library inside of uh, Enscape is the ability to have the ability to control what some of our adjustable assets are. 
So in one of the recent editions of Enscape, we do have the ability to have adjustable assets. So now things can have the ability to have colors changed. So you can pick on any one of them that you want. And if it shows up full color here, this is where you have the ability to toggle between the different variations that that model has. So you can change the color, you can change um, the different um, values that that thing has, that that object has just by clicking each one and you're gonna see the different options as well. And once you hit apply changes, again, it's gonna push those changes back inside of Revit for you. You can toggle the different assets that have variants just by going up to the tag here and selecting adjustable. And you're gonna see all these different objects have the ability, have some form of customization to them. So trees have the ability to become autumn trees. Um, vehicles have the ability to have the colors of the vehicles change. Some furniture has the ability to have different colors applied to them. So again, you can pick on any of the different colors you want. You can do red cushions, you know, the, things like that to really add more realism to the material, to the model here. Now let's say our model is getting to a point where we need to start showing our clients what the design is gonna look like. So we have a couple different options for that as well. So the first one, and we need to add in a little bit more realism to it. So here is our visual settings tab in the top right-hand corner. So this is gonna control what the whole look and feel of the Enscape window is gonna look like. So, you know, let's say, let's take a step back and say for early stage designs, if we haven't picked materials yet and really just need to show our clients exactly what the space is gonna look like, kind of do some sun studies as well. We have the ability to go into white mode. So this is gonna show our model with a white layer over it. So now we can change the time of the day, do some real nice sun studies as well inside of here. We have the ability to control the outline, so give it a nice kind of stylistic, cartoony look to it. We also have the ability as well to go to light view mode. So this is really beneficial for doing lighting studies as well. So you can see where all the hotspots are in your scene. So when you're scrolling through the time of the day, again, you can see where all the hotspots are. And then again, also inside this visual settings tab is where we have the ability to do some different image enhancing features like saturation, contrast, these types of things. Our sky tab is gonna control the Enscape cloud sun system. So we can control the density of the clouds. We can control the variety of the clouds as well too. We really have total control over how we want that final look to be for our clouds. And now if we want to add in background images, what we can do here is let's get a good shot. So if we want to add in a background, so Enscape comes with a couple different ones. So a desert, forest, mountains, things like this. But if we want to add in our own custom ones, how can we do that? So we have the ability to load in those, it's called a skybox. And then you're gonna hit load skybox from file. And what you're gonna do now is go find a HDR file or a JPEG if the format is set correctly. And then you can place these inside of Enscape and we're gonna see what that background is gonna look like inside of our scene here. There we go. This is well into position to really frame up how it's supposed to look. You can adjust the background brightness of that as well to kind of start blending the two together. And the really cool option is what we call the brightest point of sun direction. So what that's gonna do is tie the brightest point of the background image, which is always gonna be the sun, to Enscape's sun. So now when you rotate that, your shadows are gonna move with that as well and really start to kind of give you that more realistic look. And then in the output tab, this is where we're gonna set our output resolution for our final renderings. So you can do by default Enscape renders at full HD. You can set that to be ultra HD or you can even set a custom size if you would like as well. One cool little trick I do like to always have checked when I'm doing renderings is the safe frame button in the top right corner. So this is gonna give me ability to adjust my shot accordingly because we can see the crop regions of where those are gonna be for our final renderings. And then if you need to as well, go into Photoshop afterwards for further compositing. We do have the ability as well to export object ID, material ID, depth map and alpha channel as well. And now if I'm ready to do a rendering, all I have to do is hit the screenshot button, tell it where I would like to save and let it render. One of the big benefits of Enscape being a real-time rendering engine, again, is you're always going to be looking at what that final result's going to look like. So very fast rendering speeds. And again, 
what you see inside the Enscape window is what you should get for your final rendering. We do have the ability as well to do batch rendering. So you can batch render any different 3D view that you've created with Revit. And then in addition to steel renderings, we have a couple of extra, couple of extra options to get our designs to our clients. The next one up is what we call our 360 panorama feature. So if everybody has their phones on them, I invite you to try and scan this QR code with your phones. So you should just be able to hold your phone up to the screen. And then from there, it should ask you to go to a web link and then allow for immersive mode. And you should be able to see the inside of this building on your phone. So this is a really cool option to be able to get your designs to your clients. Another cool way that we're seeing these be used a lot is if there are new developments going up and outside where their development is, they got the banner of what the final rendering is going to look like. People are starting to put QR codes on those banners of what individual spots of the model are going to look like. So people in the community can walk by and scan them with their phones. So we'll leave this up for a couple more seconds. And also there is a replace feature as well. So say you need to make a change to the model. All you have to do is make a change to the model, regenerate the panorama, and there's a button that says replace, just replace that. And then you tell your clients to refresh this link on their phone and they're gonna be able to see the new changes applied to that. So really powerful workflow to be able to get your designs to your clients, especially on mobile device too. The next option that we have is what we call our video editor. So this video editor, all you have to do is start from where you want. Let's say we want to do a shot where we walk outside. All you have to do is simply click the play button, bottom right corner, and then simply navigate to where you want to go next. Let's say we want to walk to about right here. All the while, just adding keyframes at each one of those spots where you want to go. And now if we want to preview this, all you have to do is click the play button in the bottom left corner and you'll get a nice preview of what this animation is going to look like. Again, if there's a little delay, it's running nice and smooth on my machine. And if we're ready to export this, all you have to do is hit the export option down the bottom right hand corner, set the output resolution that you would like, and then click export. And then from there, you'll get a nice MP4 file that you can send to your clients. These paths are shareable as well. So if we're working in a team project, you can save the video path, which will be inside the file as well, or you can save the path as a file, and that's, and that's an XML file that you can simply send to your other coworkers and click load path from file, and they'll be able to work out that same path. All right. And then the next options that we have are these standalone files here. So this exe file is going to take everything that's inside the Enscape window and create basically a playable game for you. So this is a file that you send to your clients. And from there, they do need a system that meets our system requirements, but they don't have to have Revit or Enscape on their machine at all. They just have to have a system, again, that meets our system requirements and they can double click this file. The Enscape window is gonna launch. And from there, they can navigate around the model, change the time of the day and freely explore the site. They can't make any changes to the exact model because again, it's just a viewer form. The web standalone is a link that you will email to your clients. And then from there, they click this link and Scape's gonna launch over a web over a web browser. And then from there, again, you're gonna be inside the Enscape model. And then you can navigate the model, change the time of the day and freely explore the site. And then our last feature that we have is what we call our virtual reality feature. So Enscape is a one-click VR solution here. So if you have a VR headset hooked up, all you have to do is click this VR button. And then from there, you're gonna put your headset on and then whatever you're seeing inside your headset, we're gonna be able to see on this Enscape window. So if I move my physical head right, the whole Enscape window is gonna be moving right. Now what's really powerful about this is if you're doing a design review with the clients, you put them inside of VR, they get a true one-to-one -one scale sense of what their space is gonna look like. That's something more than what a still rendering can, can give them or video, because now they can actually experience what it's gonna be like, you know, sitting in their living room or, sitting at their kitchen table, you know, looking out at their scene. And from there, any changes you make inside of Revit are going to be updated inside the Enscape window in real time for them. So really powerful workflow there to really 
immerse your clients in their models. And then last but not least, this is a Revit specific feature here. So we have this render image in a document. So what this is going to do is take a still rendering and put this inside of your Revit project and create a renderings tab for you. So now you can have your renderings inside of Revit. So now you can set these as on a title sheet, make it a starting view if you need to as well. But, and for that, that was an overview of how Enscape, the real-time rendering engine works, how it plays well with Revit. That, I'd like to turn back over to Dan. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Josh. So it's kind of interesting as Josh was, you know, working in Revit, he's rendering in Enscape. And it's really creating that single source of truth, right? Like everything that you see on screen uh, and the Enscape file is also in the Revit file. So any change you make, um, a change you make anywhere is really reflected everywhere. Um, I also wanted to show this kind of example. Uh, Josh talked a little bit about the QR code. And um, let me just take a second for this to load. So you guys could probably see my screen now. This is an interesting example of how the, I'm seeing the QR code being used more and more. So we're starting to see designers actually embed these QR codes into their drawing sets. So contractors can actually see the space and what the space is supposed to look like before it's built. It's kind of an interesting uh, new presentation that we're, that we're seeing. Um, I also wanted to mention that while Josh is showing off kind of a residential file in Revit, um, you know, Enscape is used for all different type of project work. So many different scales from individual objects to rooms to, you know, massive buildings, uh, industrial projects, and, and even master plannings. And then also while Josh was showing it off in Revit, we also support um, all of the major BIM programs. So uh, AutoCAD, SketchUp, Revit, ArchiCAD, and Vectorworks. Um, and when we sell Enscape, we sell it as one universal license. So when you buy a license of Enscape, you don't need separate licenses for all of the 3D CAD programs. Um, with the one license, you can run it in uh, as many as you pro programs as you need to. And then more recently, we're cross-platform, so you can run that um, license that you purchase on a Macintosh uh, or on a Windows machine. Uh, now, before we open up the Q&A, I just wanted to kind of maybe point out some useful resources for those of you who are learning Enscape. First, for frontline support, our knowledge base is really a great place to start. Uh, with a simple keyword search, you can really find answers to, to most of your commonly asked questions. Uh, next, we have our content hub. This is a really easy way to stay up to date with the company news and helpful tips and tricks. If you're not already signed up for our newsletter or the content hub, please go to our website and subscribe. I think you'll find it's a, a very valuable resource. Uh, and then lastly, um, on our website, you'll find a, a library of on-demand getting started guides. And these are a great way to get your staff up and running quickly. In addition, at the bottom of our website, you'll find some really ready to go sample models that you can explore and use for your own testing. Um, if you haven't visited our YouTube page, there's some great resources from us as well as from our, our community of users. So I'd encourage you to check that out. And then speaking of community, our message board is really a great place to really find unbiased advice, you know, hardware, software, um, and then to answer any workflow questions you might have. Um, if you're not yet using Enscape, we'd love for you to try it. So you could go to our website and experience the benefits that Josh demonstrated all for yourself. You could download a trial there. Um, and with that, I'd like to kind of open it up for, for Q&A. Thank you, Daniel and Josh, for that wonderful Welcome. presentation. Um, and yeah, well, we have some questions. I would like to um, show you guys something. Okay, so yeah, as, as Josh and Daniel mentioned, if you want to learn any of these topics in detail or you want to take um, a custom, a personal demo, um, they can help you with that. These are our numbers, our contact information um, per region, and you can also contact me directly and I will um, talk to Josh and Daniel. Um, and also to remind you all that we have coming up next next um, Thursday, I believe, our mm -hmm. webinar. We will have Building Brilliance, AC Collections, Forma, and Revit Magic. Um, then on February 21st, we'll have a Leica webinar. 
And we will have an interesting one on February 22nd, the day right after the Leica, Leica one. Um, so you can ha uh, have an overview of the Autodesk um, platform and installation maze that it is. Um, and we'll also have on February 28th um, a Bluebeam webinar. Um, so yeah, we invite you all to um, click on the webinar link you'll have, I think is in the in the right corner. You click and click there, register, and if you cannot attend, you'll get the, the recording. So, so that's great. And if we don't have any more questions, I would like to thank you all for attending. And thank you again, Daniel and Josh for this presentation. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for attending. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.